Hey everyone, it's Sevi. With early access, I've managed to test the Arataki Gang deputy, Kuki Shinobu, for about a week already. And let me say it's been a roller coaster as trying her out tested my patience and sanity. <sighs> well, this is an unfortunate turn of events. There's no good way to say this, so I'll just say it. As a support, Kuki is difficult to recommend when it comes to her utility and the current game meta. It's honestly hard to find a place where she excels in or where simply using other alternatives won't be a significantly better option. However, after inhaling so much copium and finding ways to make her work, I did find some electrifying surprises to make her not just work fine, but work much, much better. Most of this review will talk about her pros and cons as a support, then towards the end I'll discuss some shocking alternatives where she actually gets better. And if you need more detailed advice, I do have a separate guide video that talks about how to use and build her which you can check out later. Link is in the pinned comment. So let's get into my review for Kuki Shinobu, starting with how she fares as a support. Despite Kuki being the long-anticipated Electro Healer, her actual healing ability has been lackluster so far. Especially in comparison to other healers, it's just meh. But it's also more of the mechanics and how it works in practice that make it a bad experience. For one, she has to consume 30% of her own HP to activate it, which is in character with how much of herself she gives to her Arataki family, though thankfully you can't go lower than 20% HP. From my experience in continuous battles like Spiral Abyss, she'll keep eating her own HP to the point that, in some cases, she'll be the one in danger of dying. The skill only heals the active character, and if you're using her optimally, she should barely take any field time while her healing benefits other teammates. To offset that, you have to either let her get healed by her own skill, which is slow and would eat field time from other units, or have another healer in the team, in which case her healing would be redundant. Her healing also has a delay from casting it to the first heal. It takes about 2.5 seconds for it to kick in. At that moment, she's vulnerable to enemy attacks because she has no iframes, so you have to dash cancel or ensure she's safe enough. This has resulted in her untimely demise a few times. Adding on to that is her lack of emergency healing, unlike Barbara or Sayu with their instant team heals. Though Diona and Bennett don't have emergency healing, Diona at least shields to protect you before you heal, while Bennett's healing kicks in really fast. Having an instant healing feature would have helped her feel safer in my opinion. It is nice that her healing follows you around, unlike with most other healers who require you to stay within an area. This is one convenience that Kuki brings to the table. But when I used her as my only team healer, it still felt dangerous. I ended up still having to be very conscious of dodging and iframing. In fact, having a party member that can use prototype Amber's party-wide healing might feel safer. Can she still work as your healer? Well yes, she's functional. I've cleared Spiral Abyss with her on the team and survived. Mostly thanks to other support utilities like Beidou's shield or Singcho's rain swords or simply just dodging more. But I can't say it was the most comfortable experience. However, one aspect of her helps the team increase its damage or even potentially make Kuki deal some personal damage and that's her role as an electro applicator. Kuki does not have a lot of potential for raw electro damage, so don't expect much on that front. But what about reaction damage? This is very feasible since her healing still benefits a bit from EM thanks to her A4 passive talent, and you'll likely want to level her to 90 to get her max HP value. Reaction damage, in turn, scales on her level and EM stat. It's a challenge to ensure whether she's the one who sets up or triggers the reaction damage. But anyway, it's a potential build that at least plays to both her healing and damage. It's also worth noting that her electro application is done in AoE, which can be useful in particular teams wherein she could synergize with a fellow AoE unit, for example, a Yato in a Taser team. And having constant electro application will make her an okay teammate with cryophysical units like Eula and Rosaria or even Kaya, as this means Superconduct will be reliably on while providing some healing. 
Unfortunately, in comparison to existing electro alternatives that also apply lots of electro and deal much more damage, Cookie could be a downgrade. And no, constellations don't help in making her any more viable of a support. They just expand what she does, but nothing that'll make you go, wow, this changes everything. What will make her much less copium as a support is her build. Putting on team support sets like 4-piece Tenacity, 4-piece Noblesse, or even 4-piece Exile set at least gives her better team contributions. Weapon choice is also important. For example, the Favonia Sword will make her a better battery, or the Freedom Sworn, if you happen to have one, can also add more team buffs on top of her artifact set. Basically, if you really want her to be a good support, you kind of have to put specific builds on her. This makes her more workable, but doesn't entirely remove the underlying issues in her kit. All in all, the best thing Kuki offers as a support is role consolidation. Being the first Electro healer, she can slot in teams that want Electro application, Electro resonance, and or healing. But in those particular cases, if you already have alternatives, whether it's another healer or a much better off-field Electro damage dealer and applicator, then there'll be less incentive to run Kuki. Really, her being an underwhelming support is largely due to her being up against stiff competition in the 4-star character roster. There are other equally good or better 4-star healers. Even Lisa could potentially compete with her since she can also technically be a healer with prototype Amber or even just a Thrilling Tales support while offering off-field electro damage, application, and defense shred. Cookie's skill is not a good battery by itself either, having only an average of 0.33 particles generated per second. But I have to emphasize that this doesn't mean Cookie won't be a viable member in such teams. It's just that, from what I can see now, she'll just be a decent member at best and she won't bring current team comps to new heights. The way I see it, those teams will still be good not because of Kuki, but in spite of Kuki, since their core members without her are pretty good anyway. So here's where it gets interesting. Because I didn't enjoy playing Kuki as a support, I tried her out as the carry. Call it for the memes, call it copium, but hey, it actually works. Her normal attack multipliers are relatively high and will actually do more impressive damage than trying to build her as electro damage. More importantly, I found her charged attack combo to be very fluid to consecutively spam while costing only 20 stamina. This makes her NACA playstyle feel good to execute. For one, I tried physical cookie and it was actually better than I expected. And see, Tenacity is her best support set, but what shares a domain with it? That's right, the Pale Flame set. So if you end up being disappointed with her support role after farming Tenacity, perhaps you've gotten a Pale Flame she can work with. Aside from her skill refreshing Superconduct reliably, it will also let her keep the 4-piece Pale Flame effect up. The Shimanawa set is also an option, and you won't need the energy for the burst. And since Shimanawa no longer limits her to physical damage, I actually tried pairing her with my C6 Bennett, where she's an overvape carry infused with pyro, and this also worked surprisingly well. There's a pure overload carry build as well, where you stack EM via a triple EM artifact build plus two piece wanderer's troop then include enough ER for her to burst reliably. I tried this with Bennett, Shengling, and Sucrose with a C0 cookie, and surprise, it comfortably passed Spiral Abyss, which all made me wonder, how are these builds less copium than building her as a support? And this all works at C0, as her constellations really don't add much to reaching her potential as a carry. Playing Kuki as an on-field carry also makes her team building choices feel more fun. Right now, she doesn't make a top-tier support character that best complements any one team, but at least as a carry. You can comp her with cryo characters, pyro characters, off-field DPSs, and even buffers like Yunjin. It's crazy how much better she can actually be as a C0 4-star carry. Was that how we were supposed to play her in the first place? 
I'm gonna be honest, Cookie was a pretty confusing character to work with because at first I thought, oh nice, our electro healer, hopefully she brings more comfort to my skill issue. And then I realized she didn't really do that, which forced more creativity regarding what roles she can perform. As a support from a meta standpoint, she's a hard sell for all the reasons I explained and especially against other 4 star options, whether healer or electro. This might change in the future with more characters or Sumeru's arrival, of course. But having tried her out as an on-field or overload carry, I can certainly say it's quite a viable playstyle for her, not to mention you can admire her cool animations and visual design for much longer. So before pulling or building her, just make sure to manage your expectations and understand her limitations. If you manage to get and build her and she's working out for you as a support, then that's genuinely nice to hear. But if you find yourself a bit underwhelmed like I was, don't be afraid to experiment. It might drive you to overdose on copium like I did, but you may actually end up being somewhat impressed. And that's going to be it for this video. If you want to look at different Kuki Shinobu builds, I have my build guide up already on my channel linked in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel for more Genshin Impact guides and content, and I will see you all soon. Take care!